there was no YouTube, so if you wanted a horse sound, you had to go and hire, you know, like a stack of old Western movies. <laughs> and uh, I remember we just found like the perfect horse. <laughs> that horse, <laughs> the horse. <laughs> I ended up using it on about like six or seven other songs. Hey, uh, I'm Robbie from The Avalanches. And I'm Tony from The Avalanches. And today we're going to be talking about the art of sampling. To me, a sample is any, any fragment of any recorded music that we can kind of flip or recontextualize in a new way and make something new out of. We can slow it down, we can speed it up. I, I like the way Brian Eno described it. He said he wasn't a musician, he was just an organizer of sound and I feel like that's what we do. As pretty bad musicians, it's a lovely way to kind of grab some amazing recording and playing you know, from other people and being able to use that in our own music. The sample is W. Watts Biggers underdog cartoon theme. I don't know how you describe this sample, mm. but it's it's super cool, and I especially love the way that like it sounds like he sampled it off VHS or something in the Wu Tang record. Like it's kind of wobbly. <laughs> You know, it's not, there's not a clear loop no, that's in there. The, yeah. That's the beautiful bit yeah. I think about it is like he's had to grab a couple of different sections and join them together to get these little sections of music that are free from all the other junk that's over the top. A loop is just simply a, a, a short sample that doesn't end, so it, it just repeats over and over and over. Yeah, so it'd be like from one point of the song, like da na 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 and then that you'll just loop that whole bit over and over again. It just repeats over and over and over. It just repeats over and over and over. It just repeats over and over and over. And and over, and over, and over. <laughs> this is just so weird. It's like from a different planet. So so like how did how did you know they from that one little sample make this amazing song that is just so hardcore and incredible? It's one of the ones you go, wow, that that is like being able to pick an amazing loop. He could really hear what that could become and that's a whole art form in itself. It's not jumping out and saying, hey, yeah. I'm a great sample. That, that's know. it, it's just so not obvious, that one. It, and it's just being able to go, hey, I can use that, you know, and turn it into a song like that is, is remarkable. It's the opinion of the entire staff that Dexter is criminally insane, 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 insane. <laughs> There was a sample hanging around for years, which was the Enoch Light sample, which is this big kind of bombastic spaghetti Western sample. Mm. I realized later looking back, like I just wasn't being myself. Like I was just trying to make this like super hard song. And then I came across the Wayne and Schuster record in a junk store, which was a Canadian comedy duo. And they had this skit called Frontier Psychiatrist, which was about a, you know, a guy that hated his horse and was having all these relationship problems with his horse and you know, the psychiatrist helped him out and it was just so dumb. And a kind of a little light bulb went off in my head and I thought it'll be a comedy record instead of trying to make this hard song. I just had bunches of junk like that and this was mm. the one song, this song was like an opportunity to just use it all in a, in a really fun and stupid way. Made false teeth. We were using the S5000 sampler by this time, which is, is that the one on top? Um, which had a little bit more memory so we could kind of go a bit deeper into things. There was no YouTube, so if you wanted a horse sound, you had to go and hire, you know, like a stack of old Western movies. <laughs> and uh, I remember we just found like the perfect horse. <laughs> The horse. Yeah. The horse. I ended up using it on about like six or seven other songs. Whenever I listen to this um, J Dealer song, I just feel like it's so perfect as a sample song because it kind of just has verses, choruses, all that kind of stuff, but it's using just the one source material as the, the um, that it's sampled. So it's yeah. like it's just arranging that song in the most perfect way it can be done. Uh, Two Can Win by Jay Diller samples the silvers, only one can win. Only 
I would call this like almost like a flip or something. It's mm -hmm. like it's like a re-edit kind of. It's like an edit. Like you you hear the original, and he's obviously sped the song up, um, and done a lot of fantastic side chain compression on the bass. So it's kind of like um, modern. Compression is like I guess um, a way to put a ceiling on the peaks and then it makes you able to turn it up and the sound sort of can't get any louder than that. You know, these are real musicians, he's sampling from the original record and the drummer's playing at a slightly different tempo at the end of the song than he is at the start. And so when those two sections are put together, it kind of pushes you in this way or that way, you know, and your body sort of moves with it. He uses that so effective in that song and it kind of almost makes it a little bit just like a lot less pop than that record was and he just had an amazing way of just bringing this feel to to all the music that he did it's a, it's a masterpiece of editing and re-editing in, mm. in one three minute song it's like he saw that song and went i can make this better <laughs> <laughs> and did <laughs> There's uh, Freeze, the Freeze sample. Which is the, I want your love, the, the little vocal. It's a really cool sample because it's quite a surprise when you hear the source material and it's a lot faster and uh, I think the way he's reverbed it, it's covered in reverb and he filters it filters in so it, it kind of comes yeah. out of this, like coming out of a dream or something, this sample just sort of Floats. washes over you. Mm. I'm, I mean, I'm not sure if he's cut up the Freeze record or if it's mm. just the way he's programmed his drums around it. Um, he's obscured some of the um, more obnoxious elements. The original drums almost seem to have disappeared and there's just this beautiful vocal just floats out of nowhere like mist or something. It's mm. like super cool. Part of the art form of sampling is to like obscure some of the drums on the original record, say, so if they don't, don't sound the way you want them to sound. This whole album of Jamie's is such a classic like club record, but it's like you can listen to it at home. Yeah, it's got, it's got something there that touches you. It's such a great record. I think, you know, there's just a certain uh, psychedelic feel that's, that comes about when you start lay layering samples because, um, you know, they're not meant to go together and, that, and there's notes that mm. clash. And Yeah, in each sample there's always like different little notes that you wouldn't, you'll hear in the song, but when it's laid with something else, you won't hear those little notes, but you feel them. That's what sampling does too, is just those two things that go, aren't meant to go together that do and it just matches so well when it fits. Break it on down. Woo! Bless you. Woo! Bless you. Woo! Oh, bless you. Woo! Bless you. I mean, I don't know much if Big Audio Dynamite had hits in, in, this, in the States, but certainly in Australia when I was at school, like that song was a hit. It's huge. On the radio. So I remember hearing it as a kid and being like, what is this? And you know, some part of my brain could tell that there was some kind of collage going on, you know? So I was just instantly fascinated and wanted to learn more about it and, and how a song like this was made. And he samples his own former group, The Clash, which is- That's so cool. Funny. <laughs> so cool. Waking up the global warming way Napalm cornflakes for my special K And then some of the rave records that he sampled are, are like they came out in 89 or something and he made this record in 90. So he was like grabbing from what was going on in Britain at the time and that was filtering into this record as well. But then he's got like an old Timothy Leary spoken word or something and that floats in there at one point. So it's kind of like an anything goes mentality to make this strange party record. Yeah, and I guess it's, it just feels very, like I said, it feels very collage and like, seems like there's not much 
thought to what's going on, but obviously there was, and it was, it was, you know, sampling like the acid house thing that was going on and throwing that in there and mm. the hip hop and it's a yeah. banger, yeah. There's that, that, that British thing of like, like um, where the samples are big and kind of brash and almost out of time and they're just smashed together in a really sort of haphazard fashion, but that's kind of what's fun about it's it. Very, yeah, it's still got, it feels punk like it. Yeah. It feels very punk. <laughs> It's completely blurring the lines between mm. sound collage or a pop song, but it, I, I listen. I hear it more in, in context of like his whole album, Fan, Phantasma. This gave us the confidence to go with it and just be dumb and stupid and not care too much, you know. And mm. a stupid f***ed up song on a record doesn't take away from the more heartfelt moments. It can balance that out. It balances it out in a beautiful way. The record he sampled was just a dumb, dumb kids record. <laughs> It's kind of that license to just throw a lot of things in there as well and not so much just about a groove that kind of holds the song and then in and of itself isn't just about one sample. I also love um, Cornelius has sampled another record in this track uh, called Monkey and obviously he takes his name from a character in Planet of the Apes and he sampled a record where the name, even the name of the record has meaning to him and we did that too with like sampling Madonna's Holiday, you know, on a travel themed record and um, I kind of get a kick out of those different layers of meaning as well. So it just reminds me of like the weirder moments of like Frank Zappa or, you know, like that kind of... It's like the Flintstones on acid or something. <laughs> I love the Nancy uh, Wilson sample. There's something so final about tonight may have to last me all my life. Like it's, it's I'm not desperate, but it almost feels just like it's this, we only have this moment that we've got to hang on to and this isn't gonna last forever and let's make the most of it. It's, it's mm. really beautiful. Say you love me too. As you're making a record like Since I Left You and it goes along, you kind of end up with a little library in the back of your mind of like great samples that don't have homes yet. The wonky piano sample was on a floppy disk that we'd had for years and I sampled it by um, just touching the turntable mm. as, it, as I sampled it. So it was kind of going woo woo. I came across the Nancy Wilson record and I kind of thought that they'll, they'll go together. Like I just, it was one of those things I just knew. With sampling, your voice can be endless. You just don't have a limit. I, re I remember like Andrew Weatherall talking about like everybody who's owned a record before it comes to him has contributed to the crackles from mm. playing it. It's come to him and the crackles or everybody's added those crackles. The, you know the track that's made with that old record is broadcast on the radio and enters someone else's life and it's a wonderful way of reaching back through history. It's like you're a conduit or something. Mm.